One Shot Color Tutorial for SETI Astro Suite. Welcome to SETI Astro. First, make sure you're on the latest version of SETI Astro Suite. So head on over to SETIastro.com under Astro Program, SETI Astro Suite. Version uh, 2.10X is out, so be sure to get it here and you can get the latest version for your operating system. The latest version has a lot of great new updates too, including pixel math and a histogram view. And I think that's gonna really help us here in our one-shot color processing. So let's go ahead and open our OSE image. So I did get this uh, one-shot color image of Orion from a member over on Discord. So if you wanna join the chat and hang out with everybody, be sure to come over to my Discord as well. We can do a quick look at the image here just with auto stretch. There's a bit of a gradient. It's, uh, there's some noise as well. But the first thing, especially for OSE images that I like to do, and I'm sure you've all seen this before, when you do a linked preview, normally with one shot color images, it's just either like all green or all blue, depending on whatever channel just kind of received the most during the light during the stacking process. So in this case, it's like all green, right? So before doing anything, I like setting a baseline. So now that uh, the new version has a histogram view here, let's go click that. It's gonna open up a histogram, including statistics off to the side, and it is linear data. Uh, so you can see the histogram is just all smashed up on the left, but not all the way on the left. Right, there's pedestals here. The, the, the red is the dimmest, then it's this blue, then the green was really bright. And that's why when you did a, like a linked auto stretch, it, it looks green. So we're gonna, don't be, don't be frightened, do some quick pixel math and get rid of these pedestals. All it is is wasted space in our processing and really puts a lot more pressure on all the processing steps to make the colors come out looking correct. So it's best just to do this with one shot color images right off the bat. I'm gonna click the new pixel math button. It's just gonna open up essentially a freeform text here. Don't get scared. Your image currently is in slot zero. So I'm gonna go slot zero, minus, and then minimum, so M-I-N, of slot zero. All that's gonna do now is take each channel and subtract that minimum value off it. It's going to align all the minimum values together. And I'm gonna click OK. When it's done, it'll say pixel math operation applied successfully. And you may not even notice any difference here, but in the histogram, now, you probably can't even see it, now everything is absolutely right up on the left. You could see that it set the minimums all to zero, so it slid them all to the left and uh, your medians and stuff didn't change. Nothing was clipped. I wanna emphasize that nothing was clipped. It just slid it all as far as it can go to the left. So it gave us all the headroom we could ever possibly want now as well. So we're, we're leaving nothing on the table as far as dynamic range. Now this is going to allow all our other processes to flow so much easier and better. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is get rid of this gradient. Let's go ahead and open SETI Astro ABE. I'm gonna click Show Gradient Removed and Auto Stretch. Now the Orion Nebula is really, um, it's not a standard shape, which is perfect for the freehand drawing of my exclusion zone here. So this is all areas we don't want any sample points put. So I'm gonna just kinda of draw it along the, the dust of it. There, now I won't put any sample points in that, that whole area. I'm gonna click Process. It's going to say the, the gradient removal complete was successful. And now you can see that the image is very flat. Also, now in our slots, you could rename your slots. And it already automatically renamed the extract gradient slot to extracted gradient. So you could see what it looks like. Here's our preview of our extracted gradient. We could do an auto stretch. And here was the gradient it ended up removing. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is sharpen and denoise. I'm actually gonna click both now on Cosmic Clarity. We need to do all, all, the, all the sharpening and all the denoising. 
I'm going to just leave uh, it mostly at the defaults. The stars are actually pretty good. Maybe I'll just do a little, little bump up on that. Uh, we could always increase additional sharpening later too. Uh, and maybe a little bump up on the non-stellar. And then for denoise, this is a fairly noisy image. Um, I'm going to go to like 0.85, maybe a 0.8. Yeah, let's do 0.8. We could always do a little more later if we want. And then for the denoise mode, I'm going to go full to make sure it takes care of color noise too instead of just luminance noise. And then I'm going to go ahead and click execute. And we'll be back when Cosmic Clarity is done running. Okay, Cosmic Clarity is done running. Uh, the next thing we want to do is remove the stars. So I'm going to click remove the stars. Is it linear? Yes. And now it's going to go ahead and remove the stars with uh, Starnet. When it's done, it's going to ask us where we want to save our stars only image to. I'm going to go Orion stars only. And then it's going to import the starless image over to SETI Astro Suite. It'll say the starless image was updated. And now I'm going to go over to Statistical Stretch and just give it a stretch. All right, since we had the minimums pretty much all aligned, we could just do a quick linked stretch, and that's what I did here. It does look like we got a couple stellar remnants here we could take care of just with a Blemish Blaster. So I'm going to click the Blemish Blaster. And be sure to adjust the size for the, the blemishes you see. All right, next thing we're going to want to do is uh, neutralize the background here a little bit. So I'm going to click the pH water droplet just to find a region uh, for to apply the neutralization. Perfect. And now we have a, a good neutral background and our, our Orion is looking amazing already in here. Maybe we want to try a, a touch of HDR real quick. We'll click HDR. And we can, uh, you know, just, just try it on the defaults. I'm going to click Preview. And the core of Orion is always, always super, super bright. So uh, depending on how much you want to actually, how much compression you want down in there, you know, that's going to be up to personal taste, as always with uh, processing these images. So I'm actually going to bring the compression down a bit and maybe the number of scales up a bit. And it'll be a matter of just... Uh, tweaking that until your particular image is uh, how, how you like it. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, just give it some curves. There's a lot of dust out here um, that we want to try to start seeing. And we want to give some contrast out there. You can see that dust starting to come through. I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And now that we did some more stretching and stuff, I think uh, now we want to really neutralize the, the rest of the image here. I, I do notice there's a little bit of a teal in the background. I think now's the perfect time to go ahead and use uh, Remove Green. Remember, you don't want to use Remove Green right at the start. You want to go through your normal process of uh, balancing your channels, neutralizing your background, those things. It's only kind of when you're later on in your pro post processing that you want to neutralize your your green like that all right now now the background's nice and neutral we can definitely see all the the dust structure out there which is which is amazing and uh we could we could try to bring out some more of the the dust in the background let's go ahead and and create a mask we'll click create mask what i'm going to do i'm going to make a i'm going to make a lightness mask uh, maybe a blur of like 30. We're going to select the entire thing and do a preview mask. We're going to go ahead and, and save this to mask lot 0. And then uh, I, I also want um, a red mask. Let's go ahead and, and make a red mask there. We'll save that to, to slot one. And maybe also a chrominance mask. All 
and we'll save this to slot two. And we can close this. Now on our masks, let's go ahead and rename those. So slot one was our lightness mask. Slot one was our red mask. And the mask we put in slot two was our chroma mask. And now you can see those are actually renamed here. So we, we could open up the lightness mask and, and see what that's going to affect. We can go ahead and look like at our chroma mask. That's just the coloration down in Orion itself. So that might be a good one. Let's go ahead and apply that. We're gonna get the, the alert that uh, our mask has been applied. And it's so bright, we could probably uh, use saturation actually instead of chroma. And I'm just gonna give it a little bump up. And you're going to want to play with that in your own image, how much uh, saturation you're going to want down in the Orion itself. It could it could handle quite a bit of saturation, though. It's, it's very bright. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the curve. And then the other thing I want to look at here is the lightness mask. I'm going to do an invert. All right, now it's going to actually protect those uh, brighter areas and allow us to mess with the dimmer area so we're going to go ahead and apply that and now you can see that our mask was our lightness mask applied and now we can play with contrast and stuff in the outside of the image without worrying about messing up the the core of orion yeah i'm thinking something like this we still see all the dust out there but the, the background is nice and dark now i'm going to apply the curve and I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn the mask off. And let's go ahead and copy this to uh, slot two. And we can actually rename slot two our RGB starless image. And now when we look at our slots, we, we can see it's the RGB starless image. That, that'll be great for later. Let's go ahead and open up our stars only image. So now we have our stars only image. I got a star stretch turned on. Uh, let's just go ahead and give it a little color boost. We'll just do the default stretch amount. Uh, we'll remove the green via SCNR and we'll click refresh preview. And here's our stars here. Um, we could actually probably use more, more color boost here. So I'm gonna click undo. I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and do one, and the stars are pretty bright. Um, maybe I want a 4.5 instead, and then refresh preview. All right, that's, that's good now. Uh, I'm actually gonna move this to uh, slot three, just so, just so we have it there, and I'm gonna go ahead and rename that slot as well. And this was stars only. All right, now in your slots, you know, we still have our extractive gradient from earlier. Not that we needed that. Um, and then our RGB starless. And our stars on only. And now let's go ahead and combine the stars, but we probably want a mask. So let's go ahead and look at our lightness mask again. And what this is going to allow us to do is add the stars back into the image, but in the dimmer parts. Down in Orion, we don't need a, a whole lot of stars getting at it back, unless you want. You know, this is, this is again, just personal preference. Let's go ahead and move our RGB starless image to the working slot, slot zero. Okay, now we got our starless image in here. Let's go ahead and click our stars. We're gonna screen them. We want uh, the starless image from 
slot zero and our stars only was in slot three. And now let's go ahead and um, apply it. All right, now we have our stars added back in and we did uh, a fair amount of uh, curves and sharpening and stuff like that. I think we could probably go ahead and do another round of denoise since we didn't uh, do a, a full denoise earlier. Let's go ahead and remove the mask. I'm gonna go pull up uh, Cosmic Clarity. We just want the denoise. And let's go ahead and uh, just, just give it another round of denoising. One last thing you may wanna uh, do is, is just click white balance and uh, white balance to, to some of the stars here. We're gonna click apply. And then, uh, then it's done. So let's go ahead and uh, just kind of see where we're at here. And and I think uh, we didn't do anything crazy in this workflow. We we kept it really simple. And this is just an amazing looking uh, one shot color image of Orion here. There's lots of dust out into the into the lanes here. Uh, the running man's in there uh, looking beautiful, including all this extra dust in, in around the running man, which is nice to see too. And, um, you know, as always then, you know, be, be sure you're saving your work throughout this whole process, but you can save it as a JPEG now as well. So this is just a Ryan final uh, duck tiff. We'll save that as a 16 bit. And then if you, if you want to save it as a JPEG too, Ryan final uh, dot JP. G and and now that's saved as a JPEG, you know, so you could share it online and stuff uh, much easier. Well, this was just a, a quick workflow for one shot color, uh, get you guys up and running. We could have did a lot more with um, local histogram equalization, uh, morphological transformations, different aspects of splitting your RGB and RG and B channels. Uh, you know, just a lot of things can be done now within. Uh, SETI Astro Suite, but this should get most people up and running with their one shot color data uh, to get processed and just get an image out there uh, to their friends and family that they could uh, be proud to show them of the, the cool stuff they're capturing in the night sky. Please comment, like, and subscribe.